Hey guys, Ashley D. Will here. I hope you're doing well. Welcome back and welcome to all the new subscribers. This is kind of a part two to the video I recently did called For Sin We Need Life, but I'm going to entitle it Your Sources of Resurrection Life. Because when you talk about resurrection life, yes, we talk about the Lord. It's gushing from Him like a tsunami in a fire hydrant 24-7, 365 from Him and His Holy Spirit to us and within us. It can just bubble up and we can, we can drown in it. All right, so this is just really sure, solid sources for resurrection life. So what are your sources for resurrection life? We're talking about resurrection life. We're wanting to live in it. We're seeking it. We're asking for it. And so we need this in this world today, don't we? Well, let's talk about this real quick. Um, so there's two main sources for resurrection life. And obviously the first one is the Lord, okay? God Almighty. Now, if you notice, I put inside God, you, Y-O-U, because you are in Him, right? So your source of life is the Lord. El Shaddai, Jehovah Jireh. He provides everything we need, right? And this source of resurrection life is the original source. So you're kind of like going to the ocean or you're going into the fire hydrant. You're going to the source, the actual source. So because of that, I put that this source is unlimited because it is. There is no time, place, or situation, or feeling, or any kind of situation you're in that this will not be available and flowing to you in full measure. The only thing that will stop this flowing to you is you negating or blocking the grace of God or you getting in the way, okay? That will block it. But beside, beside that, apart from that, this is flowing all the time. Now, um, what you're going to want to do to maximize the flow of, from the Lord and the Holy Spirit in heaven to you and inside you is you're going to want to be open, not closed, but open, just open. Okay. You know, I have a, a one cat left here, our last pet hanging on for dear life. And he is so cute, but he will lie down um, in the house anywhere when Tom and I are just home, my husband and I, and he will lie down like this with his belly up in the air. And that is how safe he feels in our home. He knows that he is not going to be injured or kicked or anything. Nothing's going to happen to him like that. So in that way, being open and receptive is um, kind of like how our cat is. He just lies down with his belly up and he's completely vulnerable. And that's how I'm encouraging you to tiptoe toward in the Lord, in your relationship with him and give him permission to do anything in your life. Since you don't own your life, right? And you want to be in agreement with him. You're going to do this. If you feel ready, if not ask him to make you ready. Okay. So you're going to want to be open and, and uh, receptive, willing to receive, wanting to receive and Verb receiving, okay? Get that motion of coming in, inviting him in, fill me up, show me what to do. And then in this, you're going to develop trust because you're going to see that as you go along, he's doing what he said he's going to do. And so he's going to become bigger and bigger and bigger to you. And you're going to feel smaller in the sense that you don't have to try to have it together. You can just be the goofy or forgetful or whatever kind of human you are and he is okay with him and he'll take care of you. So that trust is going to get built and in this posture of openness and receptivity, you're going to become more and more honest with him. You're going to go a little bit deeper each time and you're going to tell him things you've never told anyone and you're going to bear your most maybe potentially embarrassing or shameful or condemning uh, feelings or emotions or things, issues you have in yourself, you're going to let those out slowly to see that he is just friendly and receptive to you and wants to heal you and that you can't offend him. He's just right there for you. And then as always, I've said in many of the other videos, you're going to always want to pour out your heart to the Lord because things build up in your heart and in like marriage and in different relationships, things just that you can't fix and that are hurting 
um, you've got to pour out your heart to the Lord because, I mean, you don't have to, but I highly recommend it because you just make life a whole lot harder for yourself when you let everything build up and pretend that you have to be strong. You get humbled, right? Because you end up blowing up or something happens and a big mess is made and you're humbled in that. So just don't let it get to that point. Keep pouring out your heart. When you do that, you are sowing seeds. The tears are seeds that you're sowing because the scripture says that when we sow tears, in the morning will come joy and even shouts of joy. Okay, so that's one thing that's going on when you're um, receiving this resurrection life from the Lord. And remember that it's alive inside you. It's not just coming from heaven. So you've got it coming from heaven. You've got it surrounding you in his omnipresence. And you have it bubbling up inside you. So you get all, all kind of sources going on. And in this process, you're going to become more dependent on him. Ideally, you want to be as dependent on the Lord as a newborn baby is on the nursing mother. That's how dependent you want to be. And it's a learning curve and it's a process, so don't get all caught up on that. Just say, Lord, I want this. Take me there. And make me willing to do everything along the way so I can. And if I'm not willing, make me willing. You're going to learn, as you learn more dependence on him, you're going to learn that he, you can seriously rely on the Lord. You can rely on him for just practical things like help me find the so-and-so in this grocery store. I'm not familiar with it and I'm overwhelmed with all these rows and, and people and colors. He can help you find things. He can help bring things to you that you need. If he, if he has you doing one thing in particular, but you need this thing over here and you're not feeling like he's leading you to go try to find that, you can ask him to bring it to you and he will. Okay. Um, clinging. I always put this down because like cling wrap, we want to cling to the Lord. And the more you get to know him over here and trust him, then the more dependent you'll be and the more you'll rely on him and you'll naturally be clinging to him because you will realize he is truly your life source. Okay, so you got the fire hydrant tsunami coming down all the time. This is unlimited, okay? There's never a limit unless you get in the way or you block it. And down here, it's flowing to you. And notice inside of you, I put God because he's inside you. Okay, so this is flowing to you all the time and you can pour out to him all the time. And so I have a little arrow down here because part and parcel of this system of, of receiving the resurrection life from the Lord, God's grace is in there too, right? Because the resurrection life of Christ is a grace of God and the grace of God is the Lord Jesus Christ. So he's a big part of this. But I just want to point out that Yes, Jesus Christ is, is God's grace, but I want to make the point that God's grace, some people think that it's static. Oh yeah, grace, uh, G-R-A-C-E, God's riches at Christ's expense. Yeah, I know what grace is. Okay, let's go to the next thing. No, it's not that. It is not just unmerited favor. I mean, technically, that is a, an academic definition of it. And God's riches at Christ's expense is an academic definition of it. But when you know him in a heart way, at a heart level, especially if your hearts are very close, you just laugh when you hear that because it's just so far off from the reality. So the God's grace is, some people think in that sense, if they don't know it very well, they think it's static, meaning that it's still, it's just there that it's inactive, and yeah, okay, God's grace, that's great. I like God's grace, yes. Okay, and they go to the next thing. They think it's just insipid, that it doesn't do much for them. But I want to show you that God's grace, the real grace of God, is not static, not at all. It is alive. It is powerful. It is one-on-one -on -one inside of each other, the resurrection life and the grace of God. The resurrection life is a grace of God. So the grace of God is not static, it is dynamic, very dynamic. So here is what it is right here, dynamic. And it is always changing and doing new things. And you know how he says, uh, sing to me a new song. See, he's always doing new and different things and he's always leading you in something a little different and expanding you a little bit and growing you up a little bit. So he's always doing that. And 
So there will be change when you get familiar with the dynamic of uh, grace that it how it is so dynamic so there's going to be a lot of change and there's going to be activity because the holy spirit is always moving and doing something even if you can't see and you're having the worst season of your whole life especially then the holy spirit's doing stuff deep in your heart and all around you okay and also with this dynamic quality of god's grace there's always going to be progress the more you stay in step with him the more you notice him, the more progress is going to be made in your life in whichever area you are seeking to go forward. Okay, so this is the grace of God right here. This is just for people that don't really know the grace of God and they just say, yeah, check. Now let's go study the maps or something. You know, they're not really getting it. So the grace of God is very dynamic. And what will it do for you? As you press in and get to know the grace of God and you ask the Lord to... Open your eyes. Open the eyes of your heart to the grace of God. What will you find? You will find yourself that you will have more insight into the scriptures, into yourself, into the Lord, into the reality of Him in your life. You're also going to have more positivity. You're going to be more excited about life. You're going to become more of a glass half full person than a glass half empty person. You're definitely going to grow. And with all that insight, that's opening the door for your growth. And so you're going to be excited to grow because you're positive and you're trusting him more because you're seeing how good he is. And of course, um, you are going to be getting new ideas. Like the Lord just giving me ideas all the time. And sometimes I'm driving and I'm like, slow down. I can't stop to write this down yet. Wait till I'm at a stoplight, you know, so he can get out of control. And that's just normal. It's just, it, and you don't really have to catch everything because there's so much more coming, um, you know, around the bend after that. So uh, that's what's going to happen to you over time when you start to understand that God's grace is not static and boring and inactive and just an academic thing. No, it's dynamic, very dynamic. And in a way, the Holy Spirit, you kind of almost never know what to expect. See, he's like that and he likes being like that because he wants you to be open to whatever he's going to do. He doesn't want you to try to control him or uh, say, you know, you have to do this because this is not a certain way, you know, all of that. He, he, that's really quenching the spirit and it can grieve him too. So that's the main 24 seven, 365 source there where there is no limit ever. So you want to get very familiar and very comfortable here. This is your vertical with the cross. Okay. Your vertical. And you want to just get real familiar. If this was a pool, you want to, you know, sit on the side of the pool and get your toes wet. And then a little bit later, splash your feet. And then put your legs in and then go sit on the stairs. And then go in the water. And then go in real deep, you know. And then you can just go into the deep end and drown in this, okay. This is, this is as close to heaven as you can get, especially when you get to the Sabbath rest here. It's just so wonderful. Now, part and parcel of this and and this is also extends into this and this is an number two is an extension of number one it's a secondary source off of the primary source is uh you you are a source of resurrection life why because the holy spirit lives in you that same dunamis spirit that raised Christ from the dead is alive in you. You may not be familiar with it. You may not have access to it. You may not really even understand it. It's okay. If you're a believer and you have been born again, that spirit is inside you. Get familiar with it. Grow it. Become one with it. Align with it. But it is inside you. So that's why I have God here inside you. Um, in the same vein as the uh, extension coming from number one to number two to you is others in the body in the body of christ is everybody everybody in the whole body all the believers all over the world now there is a subset of those people that i like to focus on they are safe and authentic people in the body those are people who have maybe been through a lot of pain and suffering or they have been through some type of healing or they've maybe just or interested in things like this I don't know for whatever reason but there is a subset of people and 
all of the body of Christ is wonderful and we love them and we need them. But when you're healing and when you want to grow, if you have wounds and there are places in you that could be rewounded, just protect yourself there, okay? I don't want anything that I'm sharing with you to cause you to be rewounded, okay? That's, that's the last thing I want. Okay, so just um, be discerning, I guess I'm saying, when you're, when you're going to meet people and, and getting close to people. Let the Holy Spirit lead you. Let the vertical lead you in the horizontal. Uh, okay, so this is others in the body of Christ, and God lives in them too. So this is Jesus with skin on over here. Jesus with skin on. But see, the skin is the part that can wound you. So the more you go to the safe people, the less of that you will potentially encounter. But over here with other people and with yourself, you can find resurrection life in other people. Now, some people will just give you a little splash every now and then. Other people will provide a, uh, how do you say, consistent, you know, random kind of, but, but consistently random source of it. And others will provide kind of a constant flow. But these people are all still human. They're still human. They have issues and you know, just keep that in mind. I don't want you to start to latch on to one of these type people because you get close enough, you'll see, oh, they're not God. I'm disappointed. I got to go back over here. So I'm trying to help you keep your balance. And the stronger you are here, the less this bothers you when you find out people really are human. And that will let you know that there's a place of idolatry in your heart toward them. And it probably stems from a wound going back to one of your parents. So you can consider that. But over here, I have that this is a little bit more limited. It can be unlimited if you spread it out where you have, you know, uh, maybe 12 people, 10, 12, 15, 8, 10, 12, between 10 and 20 people that you know, maybe you're extroverted and you have a lot of friends. These can be close friends that you can go to and friends that are pretty reliable in knowing the Lord and being able to connect with you. And so you can always, the more you have, when the situation comes that these are out of town and they moved away and this, you're still going to have a handful left to go to. So that's how it can be a little bit more than limited. It could be more unlimited. Do you get what I'm saying? To, if you spread it out more and you make sure that they are authentic and all, it could be a little less limiting to do that. So, and then over here with other people and yourself, the main thing you're going to want to find the um, resurrection life of Christ is the connection with each member of the body. Whether you're close and you tell each other everything or whether you uh, just say hey every now and then or you're on a team together or you see the person regularly but you don't really know them face to face. There is an energy in the body of Christ that is really, in the spirit, it's the blood flow of Jesus to all of his body parts. And that is very important to be connected to that. Because imagine just, you know, a foot, I always say, imagine a foot that's been cut off from a human body and it's just over there lying in the grass, right? It's not going to be able to walk. It's not going to be useful because it's not connected to the body. If it's connected to the body. It can heal and it can start to be used as a foot because that was the purpose for which it was intended to be used because it is a foot. So connection. And then when you connect with people, you're going to, with certain people, you're going to bond because they're going to be giving you something that you need, that the Lord knows you need. He picks people to meet needs of other people in the body because a lot of us didn't get our needs met at, when we were uh, growing up, right? So you can bond with certain people, a lot of people, and, and in many different ways. And then you're going to learn to be more authentic. Like over here, you were more uh, honest, raw, and real with the Lord as you got to know him. Well, over here, as you get to know certain people and as you get healing, you're going to become more authentic. And authentic people are just, they're just the way they are. And they're not trying to prove anything. They're not trying to impress anyone. They're not trying to be something that someone said you could never do that. There's no agenda. They're just the way they are. And that's all, you know, what you see is what you get. 
So you can start to move toward this, and this is a part and parcel of the Sabbath rest because without authenticity, it's very hard to enter the Sabbath rest. You're blocked really with lies and with fear and a lot of other things. So connection, bonding, and authenticity. And then as always, grace and truth go together, right? John 1, 14. Um, and then, so you're going to be giving grace to others and receiving grace from others. And you're going to be giving truth to others and receiving truth from others. And in these interactions, you can practice your growth. Because in this speaking the truth in love to others, as you grow up in that, it causes you to be mature and strong in, in the faith and in the body. So let the other members of the body of Christ be iron, sharpening iron with you. If someone hurt your feelings, you know, you can go say, hey, can we talk? You know, when you said that the other day, I know you probably don't, didn't realize it, but that really hurt my feelings. Can we pray about that or just something like that and see what they say and you know, as long as you're humble and you're just authentic, you know, it's, it's hard for people to get upset with you. Um, but it will show you how mature they are the way they respond. Okay? So just know that. And you can really have a lot of growth here. And the more safe people you go to, the faster you'll grow because you're not going to be rewounded in the process of trying to grow, which makes no sense. Uh, confession and prayer, James 5.16, is wonderful and free. And you can do it all day long. And this is the fastest, most efficient way to heal. And I mean, I don't care if you really have serious issues and you never go to a psychiatrist or a psychologist or a clinic, this can do a tremendous amount of healing for you. It's unbelievable. So you'll be confessing sin, struggles, um, moral faults, uh, what, you know, indiscretions, whatever it may be to other people. And you can do it anonymously if you want. I have an anonymous request. Um, and then they're going to be confessing to you. And you'll pray for them and they'll pray for you. And do you see there's this healing going on back and forth in the body when we do that. And plus we are sharing our hearts with one another over time as you feel safe enough you will. And this is bonding the body together to be strong. When everything is necking up and oh it's just all intellect and academia you know, there's no bonding. Everybody's fake and they're competing to collect a lot of information that means nothing because it's not even penetrating their hearts. Okay, so this is really important. And so I hope this is making sense. I wanted to make it clear that, of course, the Lord has resurrection life for you, but that the body of Christ has that too. And you are a member of the body of Christ. So here is your vertical in the cross. And here's your horizontal in the cross, right? So you start out with the vertical here, let's say right here. And so how is the, the cross itself going to stand up if this beam is not vertical and deep in the ground? Well, it's not. It's going to tip over, right? So this is your primary position here, your primary source um, of resurrection life. This has to be the strongest and ideally, no matter how extroverted you are, you need to love God more than you love people so that you will obey him over people. So you want to do God's will, not what Aunt Sally said or what my mom pressured me to do or what my husband thinks I should do. That doesn't matter. You need to listen to the Lord and do what he says. When this is really strong, then when you put this beam across here, the horizontal, it stays. It's more secure. Okay? Um, what else? I think that's all. But anyway, I just wanted to show you all that because there are multiple sources of resurrection life. Your primary one is the one you want to be closest to and receiving from. And that's what I do all the time is I'm always receiving from him so that I'm not needy for my husband or needy for my friends. If I have a need, I will say, hey, can we talk about this? Or, hey, let's go do something. I want to spend some time with you. But when you get filled up with the Holy Spirit here and let him heal you, you don't feel so needy and your marriage gets easier. And if you have to get separated or divorced, it's, it's hard, but it's not impossible anymore. You can do it. 
So, but, but you want to stay connected to, to the body very much. They're very important. And because, you know, Jesus Christ died for us. He died a horrific, gory, unthinkable death for us, each one of us. And we're that important to him. We really are. So he's very protective of his, of his sheep. And he ex wants us to uh, be strong and to bond and to work together to do the will of the Father. Okay, so I hope this is helpful. I hope that you'll think about the sources of resurrection life and where you are in each one and how you can kind of maneuver or shift a little bit to become more balanced or more stable. And so I hope this is helpful and I look forward to seeing you again soon.